Welcome to Blender Game Master. Today we're going to be teaching you or introducing you to Python and how to use it in Blender because everybody, they're trying to learn Python and they're like, well, what do I do with this? So what we're going to be making today is this nice little green blob of gel. Um, but we're not going to be doing it in standard ways. So first I'm going to start off with Python. Assuming you have it installed in your computer, you just type Python. Now we want to import commands from a library. Libraries are collections of commands that have been pre-made for you, usually in C, so they run really quickly. In this case, we're going to be using a library of commands called random. So from random, we're going to import a command called uniform. Uniform merely gives you random numbers. So if we go and we go x is equal equal to uniform, and then we need a start value like 12 and an end value like 39, something like that, and we type x, you're going to get a number that's completely random and between the two endpoints that you've given. So if I do it again, and I print x again, you're going to get a different number every single time. This is a really important concept. Um, and also it's important to know that x can be anything. We can be x equal to um, a word. Let's go x is a word. If we want to know what type of variable x is, you can go type type x. And Python will tell us it's a string. A string is a, is a word, a bunch of letters. Um, and it really doesn't matter. We can go right back and, and do the um, uniform command again. And if we do a type, I can't type today, type x, it'll now tell us it's a float. A float is any number, any real number. So, you know, 1.6, negative 5.3, negative 6.0, whatever. Those are floats. If it were an integer, it would be a whole number, 1, 2, negative 6, with no points. It's not really important that you know that, but just to let you know. Okay, now we're going to go control D that gets us out of Python. I'm now going to go over to the Blender screen, the one that hasn't been used. And the first thing we're going to do is center everything here. Good enough. Okay, now I'm going to add, <laughs> add, escape, add um, a polysphere. A polysphere is um, a sphere that's made out of squares. That's much better than your normal UV sphere or your icosphere. And you, everybody has it already in Python. You just need to go to the preferences, to the add-ons, and uh, turn on the polysphere add-on. And uh, I'm now going to press Z and slide the mouse over. And you can see, and now I let go of Z, you can see that it goes automatically to the wireframe mode, so you can see the wireframe of this polysphere. So it's very uniform. It's very nice. There are no triangles. Triangles tend to make problems when you're rendering. I'm going to press Z again, go to, go to render. You can see it's white. Um, a white sphere is okay, but we don't want a white sphere. So I'm going to use a texture. Um, this texture is done using uh, physically based shaders, which is basically this thing right here. And if I click on it, click uh, tab, you can see the, the guts of it. So it's really not too complex. And I got this from a guy, let's see, I'll it here. Right here. He goes by the name uh, Cinecat Pro. Hope I'm saying that right. And he's done this uh, Blender Physically Based Shaders 6. I recommend everybody watch it. It's a great video. You'll really learn something and you will no longer have materials that look really bad every time. They will always look good and then you can play with them and make them look like what you want them to look like. Great thing. Okay, so now we have this polysphere. And we want it to be blobular, like like you saw before. In order to do that, we need to go to Python in Blender. And the easiest way to do that is just go to the text editor. 
And here you can see the code, which I wrote beforehand. I'm going to type it, but it's already here. Um, what this is doing is the first line is import BPY. This is the Blender Python library. This is not just the commands, but also the data. So if you go over here to your um, properties, well, not the properties, what am I saying, to, to the outliner, you'll see all your different data types. These are all contained within this BPY, Blender Python. And you can see here I have a polysphere. There's also a polysphere within the data types. So I'm also, again, importing um, from random, importing uniform. So we get random numbers. Um, four is a Python command that goes through a list. And a list is just like you'd have a list of names. Doug, Jeff, you know, whatever. And it just goes through them one by one. And each, uh, each object in the list becomes it goes into this this variable here called object. So for object in this big long data structure, which is the way Blender stores data, um, you can see that the root, and then you have underneath that data, within the data you have the objects. One of the objects is named polysphere. That polysphere has data. One part of the data is the vertices. The vertices are an XYZ um, triplet, tuplet, or however you say that. Um, and here, so we're just taking object right here, which will give us, since we're getting all of all of the objects within this thing here, it'll give us all the, the points, all of the uh, vertices within this polysphere here. And then it'll go through them one by one. And so we're going to take the x, right here you can see the x part, the y part, and the z part, and well, it has minus here. Normally I would add, but whatever. Um, I'm going to add uniform to it. And this is a number from minus 0.1 to plus 0.1. So all this is going to do is sh shift the first um, x coordinate over plus or minus 0.1. Pretty simple. And then I'm going to do that for the y and for the z. So I'm just going to shake all the vertices up a little bit. Now if I press Alt P, it runs it. And over here, you can see what happened. Um, again, I'll go to the wireframe. There. Well, even now, oh, skip that. We'll go to edit mode. Now you can see all the points. They've all been shifted around randomly. Clearly, there are other ways to do this, but this is a simple, quick way to do it, especially if you already have the code written. Um, and also, of course, you could do much more complex things by just changing the math. Instead of using a simple random number, we could use some sort of sine, cosine, wave form, and create all sorts of really cool shapes. Or whatever. Many, many possibilities there. So again, I'm pressing... Um, well, I should probably tell you, I've got Pi menu turned on. That's why I can do this. I'm pressing Tab, sliding my, my mouse to Object Mode. I'm pressing Z, sliding my mouse up to Render. And here we have it. And for anything like this to look really good, we need to go to the world information, and we need to click on environmental texture and add in a texture here. I got them from a website. Uh, I can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head. But anyway, they have lots of uh, really good um, sky domes, which are 360-degree backgrounds and light sources. And the light source is what's really important here for Blender. Um, actually, they make them for everybody. And they're free, which is great. And I should probably give you the name. I'll put it in the links. Um, in this case, it's here. Um, why is it not showing up? That's a good question. Uh, this just seems to be an error in Blender that sometimes that background shows up, and then the next time it doesn't. Um, in any case, what can I do to show you? Not much. Well, we won't worry about it. Uh, um, so then I want to smooth this out, so I'm just going to add a subsurface. I'm assuming you guys know Blender. I'm not going into great detail here. And there you have it. A nice blob. Um, oh, something I should tell you. 
in the world setting, when, when you add one of these nice backgrounds, you need to click on multiple import importance. And um, 256 works. You can you can move it up to 1024. Might work even faster. But you can see it's it's quite noise free that way. Um, and of course I've got uh, my samples at 500. Um, my light paths here are pretty basic. Probably be better if I put full global illumination. It being such a simple scene, it won't take that long to uh, to render. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching the video. Please um, like it and sign up and tell everybody about it. Um, if you have any questions, I really want to know. Um, and if there are other subjects you'd like me to cover about Python or anything to do with the Blender game engine, please let me know. Thanks. Have a great day.